Welcome to this a special edition of the Sprint Car Unlimited dot com podcast. Uh, we're here with James McFadden. James, how you doing? Good, mate. Thanks for thanks for having me on. It's it's tough with the old time difference to get us <laughs> on the on the same terms, but but we're here, so it's uh, it's good to be on your show. Yep. Uh, you know, obviously, you were in the news yesterday, whatever day it is over there compared to us, but I'd say yesterday. Uh, you're running high limit next year, but before I get to that. The Roth thing, you're back with Roth Motorsports. And to me, I talked about it today on my YouTube show. I I was happy to see that. I thought you had a career year last year. Uh, You were competitive all throughout the year. And I thought it was warranted that you were back with this team. Is Were you ever in limbo about all this? Or was this pretty much a, you knew you were going to be back with Roth this year? Uh, yeah, I, I sort of was in a little limbo there towards the end of the year and, um, you know, didn't know the exact direction the team wanted to go in, um, whether they were keeping two cars, going to one car or, or what the deal was. Um, you know, I was, I was pretty lucky in, in the fact that Toyota, um, you know, were, were pretty confident in, in myself being back and, and obviously talking with Dennis and Teresa and, and Todd and, and our team, we, we sort of, um, got a program together and, and was able to get it together here for the high limits. So excited for the new year, excited for that. Definitely excited to be back with, with Roth and, and especially with Brent. Um, I think we've, we've really forged a great relationship and, you know, I think coming off a, a seven win season like we did and then, and then sitting in limbo was, was a bit nerve wracking for me, but um, yeah, we definitely, we nutted it out and, and got it, got it to where we were all happy. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get this season started. What made you guys go high limit racing? Uh, I think a big part of that was probably, you know, having, having two cars um, on each, on each tour, you know, the, the ability to do that is, is great. A lot like what shark racing are are doing Uh, for me. It's, it's a great move for us. I get to spend a little more time at home. Um, You know, it's a, it's a little less demanding schedule on, on the travel side of things and, you know, uh, having a small family on the road, that that's a, that's a big key thing. And then obviously uh, Toyota, we're a big decision in, in making, you know, steering us in a direction that they wanted our team to go as well. So, you know, all three parties thought that was a, a good idea. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to be a world of outlaw and, and race world of outlaws racing, but um, you know, sometimes things in life change and, and um, you know, the high limit look like a, a great thing for me and um, it's going to be an exciting new venture. You know, I, I mentioned this morning when I talked about this, I never understood teammates competing against each other in their own stuff, in the same stuff. It seems like you, yeah. you would take away from each other. This way, you can double debt. I mean, let's face it. Uh, you know, Roth could get a charter. Buddy could do well. And then you can also have some freedom, which also sounds pretty good considering what you've been doing the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, as a two-car team, it's a no-brainer. Um, do I think two car teams work together in, in the same series? It's, it's questionable at times over 85 races. Um, you know, Brad and I were, were really close as teammates. Um, but we still had a couple times where we, where we wanted to headbutt each other. And, um, you know, no doubt buddy and myself would have been the same way. We, we seem to line up and race each other every, every night. They're the last you know, sort of 30 races. So at some stage you're going to, you know, you're going to run into some issues and um, you know, this way where we're going to still be able to be a hundred percent gas and up and not have to worry about each other. And uh, you know, we're going to still work together closely. I, I feel, um, you know, I, our teams get along really well and Dylan and buddy and, and myself and Brent. So yeah, there's no doubt we'll be sharing information and, and helping each other get down the road, but you know, there's, there's times we are still race car drivers and competitors and, and teammates at just a, another person strapping a helmet on. So yeah, there's, I think for, for me personally, it's, it's a, it's a great move. And like I said, the big deal for me is being able to come home maybe a little earlier and, and having a little bit more time off uh, through that center part of the year. But Toyota, uh, how's the motor been? How's this whole project progressed? I, I, I saw improvement last year. Uh, I know you're, you're a motor guy. I mean, that's what what you did back home. Uh, Where's this program at? And are you, are you pretty pleased with, with where they're at in a pretty short amount of time? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's always highs and lows with with developing something. It's like they just grab a program from, you know, the NASCAR or a little bit of program from here and there. They've had to develop something from from scratch. So there's always going to be some teething issues and, you know, they've they're all in, they're hundred percent in and and I feel like they're on top of, you know, most things. It's uh it's a beautiful engine to to race. Um I think my qualifying and my half mile stuff this year is, has really stepped up from where it has been in previous years. And, you know, Brent's done an awesome job on my car and, you know, there's times where I think my engine has, has got me a little further down the straightaway and um, made a little bit more speed than, than in previous years. So yeah, definitely, um, you know, proud to be a part of it. I've, I've really enjoyed putting the engine engine builder cap on a few nights and, and figuring stuff out and, you know, I've had to use your head a little bit different um, as a driver as well in times. And, you know, my relationship with TRD and, and those guys has, has been has been really good. They've, they've allowed me to bring a couple down here to Australia and we've been running them here. And being able to back-to-back, you know, engines in Australia where I've grown up and know exactly what gear and fuel and things that I do, you know, for the last 10 years over here to to do that here and then, you know, sort of be able to change things around and make it, see if I feel like a, a really big difference has been great. And I think there are, they're going to be something that a lot of teams are going to have to look at um, pretty closely here shortly, I think. So you're back in Australia. How's the swing been being at home? How's how the results been? I know, obviously you would have liked to win the classic. Everybody down there wants to do that, but uh, how's the swing been? What's it been like being home for you? Uh, results wise, absolutely terrible, mate. Um, you know, we, we've been in the hunt every night. I think we've been in the top, you know, top three cars, uh, every night. Um, just haven't got a result to, to finish it off. I've been, been building a lot of, a lot of parts and cars and wings and stuff. It's actually been, been a little stressful to be honest. Um, there hasn't been much of a holiday here. The the last or vacation, sorry. Um, hasn't been much of a vacation here the last, the last couple of weeks. So uh, car's been good. Um, obviously have a really great team and great sponsors in Napa and, and obviously with Toyota. So it's been fun. Um, hopefully. So we raced tonight for the Australian title and, um, Saturday night, uh, is the big one here. So yeah, excited to get that going. Obviously I've started to run out of a few, <laughs> few parts. So <laughs> I'm on for a clean weekend, but yeah, classic was disappointing, mate, but that's racing that happens. Um, yeah, we just we just seem to put ourselves in great positions and and haven't finished it off. But being home's great, uh, hanging out with family and you know Mav gets to play with his cousins and um, hanging out with grandma and grandpa and nan and pa and, and everyone that he doesn't get to do through the whole season over there. So yeah, really enjoy being home. Um, you know the racing kind of sometimes gets in the way of of Mav and and our little time, but we we still enjoy racing for sure. So when do you, so you'll be back for obviously East Bay. Are you yep. going to be back for Volusia as well? <laughs> no, no, we're, we're no Volusia this year and then straight into East Bay, um, which, which I'm cool with. Uh, that gives us a couple of weeks to, to sort everything out back home. And, you know, I don't think people realize how, uh, how hard it is to get over there, you know, with visas and things like that. It's, it's actually really, really difficult. And, um you know to get all of those you know even little things like bank accounts and tax and all that sort of stuff done and and finished in australia by the time i go over there because you're never home um so yeah it's 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 not too bad having a a couple weeks off there to to, you know no sprint car racing and and a couple weeks to just get everything dialed in and and set up for you know for those nine months that we're away so we have a little incident over here with Lincoln Speedway going to no flagman. And you're the perfect guy to ask because everybody wants to point to Perth Motorplex uh, over in Australia as the track that's made this virtual deal work without a head flagman. And yet my contention is you can't compare the two because Perth is run by the government. I mean, can you explain that over there and how that works and how maybe Perth can pull this off with the people they have in place? Yeah, so I, I, uh, I'm on the fence with it. To be honest with you, I don't really mind either way. But um, Perth, you know, it's probably going to annoy some some people, but Perth is the best and nicest facility in the world when it comes to sprint car tracks. Um, there is not one place that even compares to to how well 
um, it's maintained, how it's looked after, how it's presented. Um, I, in my opinion, anyway, um, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of people will will agree to with me. Uh, so I think they're in the forefront of of things. Whether that's you know they're on live TV with um, on oh, Seven yeah. Mate. Um, they have drones on, you know, on the slings that go and follow the race cars and, and things like that. So there's a lot of things there that they're, I think, you know, setting the bar highly. Um, and they're a long way in front of, I think, most tracks in Australia. And, and I would say 80% of the tracks in, in America when it comes to things like that. So, uh, yeah, they have production crew and they have, you know, their chief stewards, there's a couple of people in the boxes. They have re live instant replays on TV as it happens and, wow. and things like that. I think they're just, it's hard to compare apples with apples. Um, but I, yeah, I actually raced with that flag deal and, and I mustn't have listened at driver's meeting. I was telling you this before, and I, I mustn't have listened to, at driver's meeting and didn't know they existed and uh, about ran over the car after the check of flag because I, uh, I didn't know what, what that was on the fence. So <laughs> Uh, once I've figured it out, it was actually not bad because it is quite a bright LED light and you can you can see things, you know. I find at some tracks when flagmen are really high, you can't see them in certain points. And yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Um, you just got to make sure you've got the right people pressing the button. Yeah, and for me, it's you got to have the eyes. You can't, it's a math problem to me. If you have 15 people stationed around a speedway and you take two out and don't replace them, well then you only have 13 and that means more can happen. But uh, I, I understand Perth has a lot of volunteers and a lot of people around the place. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, I don't know the numbers at all, but like I said, it's a, it's a well-oiled machine that place and they have to be because of their live TV stuff. Um, you know, they've got really high centered core like boxes where the just stewards are out of so that you know they they look have a bird's eye view on everything and like i said they just they're just a well-oiled machine that's that's got it right there was you know a lot of years when that place first opened that it wasn't right and they you know they couldn't get the track right and they couldn't get things going the right way and they've just slowly got to the point now that they're yeah they're dominating over here and you know it's a place you want to go and race but yeah i, I i'm not opposed to it i don't think it's a bad thing um, to my honest opinion is those flagmen are, are braver than, than I am. I wouldn't be standing <laughs> on some of those catch fences over there in America yeah. waving a flag. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple sides to look at it for sure. <clears throat> so you're coming back to the States this year. And I've talked to you a little bit about this throughout last year. What is the future for James McFadden as far as racing in the United States? Yeah, it's a, it's a question I get a lot, um, to be honest <laughs> I must be getting old or something. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of depending factors on that. Um, you know, my boy needs to go to school here soon. So, you know, that's going to be a, a big thing. Um, I'm always going to stay in Australia. I, I just, you know, if I was going to go to America, I needed to to move, you know, 10 years ago and, and set up and have a house over there. And we don't do that. So we enjoy coming home each year. And, you know, my partner Zoe's, uh, she, she had a successful business before we turned around and, and went to America. So, you know, I've, I've started how I've had my fun. I've had a, you know, a few years over there and, um, you know, it's maybe time in the next couple of years to, to have a look at it all, but you know, I'm, I'm happy to come back this year and, and get on high limits and, and see if, see how that goes. And, and by the end of the year, you know, make a decision whether we, we keep going or we, we call it, Call it a career over there or not. It's, you know, I think once you get to the level of the outlaws and do all that, it's really hard to pull it out of gear and go over there and do a couple of weeks here and there to, to scratch an itch because you know what it takes to be, you know, at the level that the outlaws are or the high limits are going to be. And yeah, it's going to be a tough thing to do. <clears throat> now, the one thing about high limit, maybe it prolongs it for you because look, their schedule, their mantra is about 26 races less than the world of yeah. outlaws that's got to help your decision to maybe come back or maybe, you know, make you want to do that longer. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Um, that's probably been, been set up by a guy that's in the same point in my career, you know, Brad, <laughs> Brad's yeah. probably sick of running up and down the road. Um, you know, I'm, I'm quite new to the whole outlaw scene and, and going up and down the road, but I've been doing this, you know, in America for the last, 10 years traveling from home for, for four or five months or six months. And, 
you know, so technically I've been doing the, the outlaw thing for, for quite a while, but not the actual swing, but yeah, I, I think that will, that'll change. I think the whole dynamic will be different on the road this year. And, um, you know, that's, that's the thing I'm looking forward to and excited for, but yeah, being able to come home a little more was, would definitely help out. And, um, you know, I just, I don't see the necessity in having to be on the road from, you know, February to November when we, you know, sit around, it's, it's a little different for Zoe and myself and Maverick. We, we don't have a house. So we, you know, when we're not on the road, we're still on the road, essentially <laughs> in the moment. We're not, you know, we don't have a house to go back to or a shop or something. So yeah, for us, I think that that downtime is going to be nice. You know, we might be able to shoot home a couple of times through the year. And I think if, if we do that, we, we might prolong the career a little longer. So last thing, then we'll get you out of here. I, I know you got to prepare to race tonight. Uh, Callum Williamson is coming over here. He's going to run the Trone car. You've run against him uh, a long time, I guess. Uh, he's been running 14 years. It's surprising he only has 200 races, but you guys don't race as much over there. Uh, what can we expect from him? I I, I see he's a gasser. Uh, it's good to have another Australian come over. I, I think the Americans are really in tune with what's going over or what's going on over there more because guys – like you and Carrie and, and others coming over, but what can we expect from uh, Callum? Yeah, I think, you know, the streaming stuff has really helped um, as well, you know, being able to watch over here and watch what's happening. But yeah, Callum's a good dude. He's a, he's a straight up Australian, that guy, you won't get a, a drier guy to talk to on the microphone. He'll, uh, I don't think anyone will understand a thing he's saying over there. So uh, he's a gas man, mate. He's a great guy. He's a gasser. Um, you know, I think he'll he'll have his challenges definitely over there with some of your tracks you've got. Um, the Perth Motorplex is is very get up against the fence and you know and sort of run it as hard as you can. So Lincoln will Lincoln will get him. Um, you know when you have to start getting technical, but he'll he'll adapt. Um, he's a good guy. He's a good racer. Um, he's gonna. I hope he does really well, mate. I really do. Um, he's like I said, he's got a really cool family. He's a lot like. Zoe and myself, they got a they got a little girl and um, you know, it's gonna be fun to to see see how he ends up. I, I hope they, you know, I hope they do well. Um, you know, I've got to thank Trones for putting another Australian in there. I think that's um that's pretty special. It's hard to get over there. And and another thing is I don't think people realize how hard it is to get a ride in America, um, being Australian and for Callum to be able to get that. Um, that opportunity is great. So thanks to them. And um, I look forward to seeing his progress over there. I, I can't wait to see him at, at some of these places. And, and I think uh, America in for a treat. I'm anxious to see him at Port Royal. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be right there. He'll pound it. Uh, he'll be good <laughs> in those places. Um, yeah. He's definitely not scared of getting up there and gassing it up. And, and like I said, I, he's, he's really evolved as a racer too, though, in the last couple of years. And, you know, he's, he's learned to, to harness that and slow it down at times and, and speed it back up. So I think he'll do a really good job. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to go drive his car there in WA and, and meet his family and, and meet him a little more than just, you know, at the racetrack. And, you know, he's, he wants to do it. He wants to be a race car driver. And, um, you know, I think he's going to be successful. No, we have to do is get Jock Goodyear over here. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, He's a, he's a good gasser too. Um, you know, we've got a lot of good guys here in Australia and yeah. it's, it's a lot different in America than what it is over here with, with the way you drive the cars. And, um, you know, it's fun to watch guys come over there like Lockie McHugh and, and have to adapt and, and change the way they've done the things over here for the last few years. And, um, yeah, it's an exciting place to be over here right now. And I think, you know, Americans are watching that and, and want to come and, have a crack at it. You see some really good drivers, you know, Justin Peck and, and people like that come over here and not dominate as much as probably people think they're going to um, from your side. So yeah, proud, proud of where our sprint car racing is right now in Australia. And um, you know, the more Americans that come over here and the more Australians that go over there, the better it is for the sport. I couldn't agree more. And James, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to be with, to be on the show. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at East Bay. I look forward to being there, mate. So thanks for having me and uh, stay warm over there, I guess. it's I'm in shorts and a T-shirt, so I hope you're not. <laughs> I'm in my apartment wearing a hoodie because, well, it's not bad today, but I think last week it was like uh, five, five degrees. Yes. Yeah, no, that's why I come home. <laughs> I like it. 
I mean, I'm, but I'm strange. I, <laughs> I've been told that and other things many times. So, but again, thank you very much. Good luck this weekend. No worries, mate. Thanks very much. Have a yep. good one.